Hey guys, what's up? It's Depermito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in FL Studio and I'm going to be doing a review of this VST called Arcade. You've probably heard of it. It's really, really popular. Basically what it is, is it gives you a bunch of different samples and you can pretty much just play them out and rearrange them and do whatever you want to them pretty much and use them in your beats. So what it's mostly known for is a couple lines here. The first one being hooked. That's probably its most popular. It is kind of like a pop vocal chop line and it's used in tons of different beats. It's really great for like Rod Wave, Polo G, um, Juice World, any of that kind of stuff that you would use vocal chops in. Pretty much whatever you need vocal chops for. It's really great. Another one is Distant Voices. It's pretty similar but it's a little bit more ambient and uh, stuff like that. And then it's also got a bunch of other stuff. It's got like one more vocal kit. It's got lots of like Spanish kits, you know, Latin type of sounds, just tons of different stuff. It's got really cool synth stuff. It's got flutes, it's got drum kits, it's got tons of different stuff, but it's not just one sample. It's like a melody or a drum line or something like that. And you can play it how you want it, but it is already kind of how it is. And you can't it doesn't just like for example give you just a guitar sound it's not that it gives you like a full guitar melody and then you can play that out and do stuff to it but you can't make your own guitar melody for example so one of my biggest complaints about this vst is that it isn't a one-time purchase you have to pay every month you can either do ten dollars a month or you can do one hundred dollars a year so you get 20 bucks off that's what i do it's a little bit cheaper but it's still really kind of annoying that you can't just pay for it once and be done but with that said it kind of does make sense because they're always updating it and giving you different kits and stuff but they do add at least one new kit every day so that's really cool you always have some fresh sounds to work with one thing that i hear people saying a lot about this vst is that it kind of kills their creativity and I don't really know where those people are coming from because for me, a lot of times I'll use it when I don't have any creativity and it'll, it'll give me some creativity. For example, like if I've got a guitar melody or something and I don't really know where to go from there, I'll just pull up Arcade and I'll find a kit that sounds cool and then I'll just lay down a cool pattern and then from there maybe I get some more ideas. But for me, it's not so much a main melody type of thing or something that you just always go to for me. It really just helps me out when I'm kind of having beat block or when I've got something and I need something else and I don't really know what to do or when I'm just kind of stuck and out of creativity. One thing that you guys definitely do want to be careful of is this is pretty hard on your computer. It's kind of high CPU. So you definitely want to save your projects before you open it up. I've lost a lot of projects just because FL Studio crashed when I pulled up Arcade. It's really annoying, but as long as you save your projects, you'll be good. And then also, once you've got your pattern made, you can just go in and render it out. And then you can close Arcade and you'll just have the audio file and you'll be all good. So that's what I do, but do be careful that it is kind of hard on your computer, especially if you're like me and you just have a cheap computer. I don't have anything crazy, so this does screw it up pretty easily. So let's just jump into the plugin. It's got tons of different lines. You're going to see here it takes a second to load up because it is kind of slow, especially when you've got a slower computer. And that's mostly just because of how high the CPU is. But it's got tons of different lines here. So one of the most popular ones right here is hooked. That's just little vocal chop melodies and stuff like that. You've also got sort of more random stuff. This is kind of like Foley percussion right here. It's pretty cool. This has just lots of different random stuff, just little like small things, not crazy stuff. I haven't used all of the kits. I don't find all of them super useful, but my go-tos are hooked, as I said, right here. Aura is pretty cool. This is kind of just lots of different random stuff that can kind of just fill up the background and give it kind of a cool vibe. I also use Poolside a little bit. This has some cool melodies and just different stuff. It's got a lot of tropical vibes and it's pretty cool. Passport is pretty sweet. It's got just lots of different like ethnic kind of sounds and it's really good for like flutes or stuff like that and it's pretty cool. I also use Vocode a lot. I don't see this one getting used too often, but I think it's pretty cool. It's like very, very synthetic vocal sounds. They are all vocal chops and stuff, but with lots of auto-tune and vocoders and stuff like that, I think it sounds pretty cool, but it is kind of specific to the beat that you're making. It's not gonna fit everything, but I do find that it's pretty useful 
and I like it a lot. And the third vocal kit that they have is Distant Voices. This is really ambient sounds and background stuff. I use this a ton. My only complaint is that a lot of times it has too much reverb, and you can kind of control how much reverb it has, but not entirely, so that's a little bit annoying. But I do find that Distant Voices is really useful and pretty cool. They also have this Overture kit. This is a very orchestral kit, and it's made with help from Spitfire Audio. These guys are the ones that did Spitfire Labs, which everybody knows it's super popular. They also did the BBC Symphony Orchestra VST, which is a really great orchestra VST that you can get for free. And yeah, so this is a collaboration with them. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's just got lots of different orchestral lines and stuff like that. Then you've also got kits like this one and this one. There's also a 70s kit somewhere. I don't totally know where. Oh, right here. Um, these are just kind of mostly like rock sounds, especially with the 70s one. Then the 80s, you've got kind of more like disco pop-ish stuff. And this one, you've got kind of more psychedelic stuff. I don't use this one too much, but they're all pretty cool, um, especially depending on the type of beats that you're making. It could definitely fit in pretty well and help you out a little bit. Then you've also got this kit right here. This is a bunch of Latin sounds. So it's got like Spanish guitars, kind of like Pyrex Whippa and lots of different stuff. I haven't used it a ton, but from what I have used, it's pretty cool. Then you've also got this Memento line. This is new, it's their newest line. So I've been experimenting with it a little bit. It's got kind of melancholy, kind of sad melodies and stuff like that. Really great for just counter melodies and stuff like that. Now, Arcane isn't necessarily great for main melodies. That's not really what it's built for because to make a main melody, you would kind of just have to lay one out that's already pre-made and it would just kind of be ripping off from Arcade. So, I mean, you can do it, but I don't think that's what most people use it for. For a lot of people, I think it's mostly for counter melodies because you can have those little vocal chops or, you know, stuff like that. And I think that's primarily what it's meant for. So guys, the way that it works is here's the interface. And so it'll automatically detect your project tempo. Although I think you can change it in the VST if you want to, but I don't necessarily know why you would. And then you can just come up here and set whatever key you're working in. If it's major, click the major. If it's minor, click the minor and you can click it. Then you can also put it up an octave or down an octave. I usually put it up an octave or just leave it where it is. I rarely put it down an octave, but it's still a cool option to have. Then it's got four little effect modules. They change depending on which kit you're using, but you can also just swap them out yourself. I generally just leave them how they are because I think it just sounds the best that way. I don't really want to screw things up too much, but it is cool that you can kind of change how your sounds are. I think it's a really good feature. So then actually jumping into the piano roll, since we set the key in the VST, everything is already gonna be in that key. So for example, right here, we're in the A sharp minor key and you can see these black notes. You wouldn't necessarily with most VSTs wanna put a note there, but because this is all locked to the key, it still works. The way that it works is each time that a note is played, it just triggers a different sample. So for example, right here, if I put it on B, it's going to play this sample. And that'll just loop. And you can probably hear my CPU is clipping a little bit. That's just because it's really hard on my computer and I have a weak computer. What you can do is all of the white notes are different samples and all of the black notes are different ways that you can change the sample. So for example, if I put this right here, instead of sounding like this, this will sound like this and each one changes it in a different way. So there's different rhythms that you can do. You can also reverse it and do just lots of different stuff. I think it changes with each kit what the different effects are. I could be wrong about that. I haven't experimented with it too much, but I think that doing that really is kind of the best way to get a unique sound out of Arcade because otherwise you're just doing the same stuff that everybody else has. And that's fine, but um, personally, I like to be a little bit more creative and stuff and just change it up a little bit. So I think that the black keys are really good for that so that you can just change how the sound is. And I think that's really cool. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I've got to say for this video. I hope it was helpful and I definitely recommend this VST. I think it's really cool and just really great for when you're kind of lacking creativity. You can just do a little something. Um, or if you need vocal chops, I think this is the best place to get them from. 
You could also use exhale. I, I don't really have any experience with that, but I think it's probably pretty cool. You can also go to splice or I think Looperman or whatever, or you can just make them yourself. But I think this is the easiest way to get really good vocal chops as well as just tons of other sounds. I think it's really cool. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please drop a like and subscribe. Let me know what other VSTs you want me to review. If I find them interesting, then I will. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all in the next video.